Hello, we are uh, looking at section 11.3 today, and this one is all about logarithmic functions. Um, we're going to work on ex evaluating expressions involving logarithms and um, solving equations and inequalities and graphing out. Uh, I'm not sure if we get too much into the graphing. No, I don't think we do that. I think we uh, kind of do not do that section. So just two items for the day. Hope you're doing well today. Let's move forward and talk about what is a logarithmic function. The logarithmic function y equals log of a base a of x, where a is greater than zero, meaning basically a is positive, right? A has to be positive. And a cannot be one. This is the inverse of the exponential function y equals a to the x. Oh, so we just learned that these two functions are inverse functions of each other. They undo each other, kind of like multiplication and division. So y equals log base a of x if and only if a equals a to the y. And this is just reiterating that relationship between them, that they are inverse functions. All right. Um, some of the requirements, as we read that, that um, declaration or the definition up here of a logarithmic function, one of the requirements is that A is referred to as the base. You heard me say base A. And base A has to be positive. And uh, it cannot equal, it cannot equal one. So A can... I don't know if you want to put A in front of there. A cannot equal 1. X is always a positive quantity. Now let's go look and see where is this X that they're talking about. Right there is that X that they're talking about. So when I see a log of something, I should see that this value there is always positive. If it's not, you can't do the problem. It is undefined. So now looking at this log of base A, that is our base, isn't it? And then y, well, the answer to a log problem is a power. y is a power. This means the same as a to the y equals x, just like we saw up there, that inverse idea. Um, over on the right, you can see the two equations, and um, they are inverse functions. They do reflect across the diagonal line y equals x, okay? Um, a logarithmic function has an answer that is an exponent. It is an exponent, or you can think of it as a power, but that is what we get when we uh, solve a logarithmic problem. So you have this little table. Let's fill in this table. If I have, if I start with the log base 3 of 9 equals 2, I can convert that over to an exponential form. And sometimes this is a little bit easier for our brain to process. It would, it would uh, convert over to 3 raised to the second equals 9. Power or base raised to a power equals the value of x there or 9. So base to a power. Remember how we said a logarithmic function has a power answer. All right, let's do the next one. Uh, you know what, guys? If you would just get in the habit of writing this, it really helps you rewrite the log equation into an exponential form. So I'm going to have one-fifth gets raised to negative 2, and that would equal 25. Does that look right? Oh, because of the negative exponent, that one-fifth would roll over, wouldn't it? And become 5 raised to the positive second. Oh, that is 25. Okay, I like it. Now, exponential back the other way. Well, I identify the power, and I know a power is the answer in a log question. This is my base. I'm just going to write little parts of this. This is the base. So it's going to look like log with a base of 10 of 100,000 equals 5, or is 5. Yep, power answer. 4 to the negative third. What is 4 to the negative third? 
Four to the negative third really means one over four to the third. Oh, so this must be one over 64. So the answer to this problem is 64. What is my power? Okay, the power is the answer in a log question. Let's write the word L-O-G. What's the base? Well, the base is four. And the result was one over 64. That'll be that X value. Log base two of 32. Well, two to something. Oh, they didn't provide it. Are you kidding me? Okay, so what would the value be? If you have your power sheet, you might be able to look on that. Um, two to what power equals 32? Two to the fifth. Okay, so we know the answer to this. It's a power of five. So that's going to give me two to the fifth equals 32. Refer back to this chart. I think it'll give you enough examples that you'll be able to um, convert between exponential and logarithmic and become fantastic at it. Example two, log base three of x equals negative three. We want to solve for the variable that's missing. And in order to do that, I've got to think in my head, what does a log question mean? To me, that means let's swing it back into exponential form. So I'm going to take, uh, or not maybe take, I'm going to convert. Convert's a better word. Convert to exponential, just like we had done on that chart on the prior page. To do that, three, write this down. I can see you. Are you writing it down? Three to the negative three equals X. Actually, I can't see you, but wish I could. Three to the negative three equals X. Oh, well, now this is really simple. The negative exponent means one over three to the third is our X value. And then let's just kind of make that look pretty. So it looks like X equals one over 27. There's our answer. Much easier to solve in an exponential form than in the logarithmic form, I believe. All right, this one, a to some power equals, oh, we know the power, a to the third equals 343. Write it, convert it, convert to exponential. Your brain will have an easier time. All right, a to the third equals 343. Now, if you looked up on your power table, you could probably figure this out. And I do believe <laughs> that it's seven. A is seven. Now, if I wasn't that sure, um, I could do a cube root on each side. I'm gonna throw this in a different color. Because it's cubed, we could undo that cubing by doing a cube root, right? The cube and the cube root um, will cancel each other. And that'll give me A equals the cube root of 343, which I have to believe is seven. So seven's our answer. C, what do we got to do here? It tells us to rewrite it. Okay, we've got a little bit bigger equations, don't we? How'd you like my eyes on that? It showed they were bigger. All right. Um, let's rewrite it in that exponential form. One third raised to the second equals that. One third raised to the second. I'm going to put that in parentheses so that I realize it's the bottom getting raised to the second as well. 2x plus 5. Well, 1 third times 1 third is 1 ninth. 2x plus 5. And now we just need to solve that. It looks like I have a, some, some ink from prior workings that is showing up. Let's uh, equation solve. We're pros at that. Subtract 5, subtract 5. That gives me 2x equals 1 ninth minus 5. Um, let's turn, oh, this is kind of tricky. I'm going to turn these into 45ths. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 over 5, giving me 5 45ths. And this would multiply by, oh, Lord. Um, why am I doing 45ths? Scratch that idea. Let's do ninths. Ninths, ninths, ninths. I guess I had the 45 from 9 times 5. Um, let's do ninths. So this would be multiplied by 9 over 9. That will work out better. 
1 ninth minus 45 ninths. There's where I was headed with that 45. My brain was just leaping ahead of me a bit. And um, 1 ninth minus 45 ninths would give me negative 44 ninths equals 2x. Let's divide by 2. That's like multiplying by a half as well. And I will get final answer of, mm, let's take 2 into 44. Negative 22 ninths equals our x. All right, into problem D. I'm going to go ahead and erase the ink if you need to. Pause this video if you still need to see some of that. All right, this one looks like a crazy, crazy math mess, doesn't it? Um, this we know could be written as 6 to the 1, 1 fourth. Um, so I'm thinking that in my head. I've got base to a power equals this stuff, um, which is what that's saying, and then we converted. Now, power to power says that we can go and multiply this. So I'd have 6 to the 2x equals 6 to the 1 fourth. Don't these look like they have the same base? Yes, they do. Well, if the bases are the same, then guess what has to be true about the exponents? The exponents have to be equal. So let's extract the exponents. Exponents must be equal. And we can just simplify this down to a little bit easier equation then. I'm liking this. Now let's divide by 2. Multiple, or dividing by 2 is really the same as multiplying by a half. And I'm going to do that because I have that fraction on the other side. So I get x equals 1 eighth. Final answer. All right. Just a minute. I'm going to pause. Hello. Um, I just had to step out. I was getting pulled away. Let's work on, we just have a couple, don't we, to do, go through. Okay. We did see, I remember that. Um, did we not? Yes, we did. Okay, so we're on to D. I'm sorry, guys. Here we go. Let's work on D. We've Oh, we talked about how to rewrite that. And then notice that the um, exponents were the same. So it was just a matter of solving the exponents. Set them equal. Multiply. I'm going to multiply by 4 on each side. No, I'm not. Sorry about that. Maybe we already did all this. And then I'm going to multiply by a half, multiply by a half, and get x equals 1 eighth. I think we were done with that problem. All right. E. Let's, uh, so I'm going to swing back and move it back into exponential form. So I'm going to get x to the third equals 5. And now I've got something cubed, so it says take a root. Yeah, let's take the... Um, uh, cube root of each side. So I'm going to indicate the cube root. And that will give me x equals the cube root of 5. And this is a positive cube root, or positive number, which this base must always be positive. And finally, let's write it in exponential form. 9 to the k equals 1. Hopefully you've, you're doing this every time, writing these arrows. I promise you, it will help you remember what to do on these. We need the kth root of this. Um, or, you know what? Let's just even think about this for a moment. 9 to some power equals 1. Well, I remember the 0 property. 9 to the 0 equals 1. So, our k value would be zero, wouldn't it? That was a nice one to finish on. Well, that covers the material, you guys. Go back, read, uh, listen to sections if they were confusing to you. We are looking at worksheet 7.3 is what it says. Um, it is our section 11.3, and there are a lot of problems here, um, but they honestly will go quite quickly. So here they're showing you how to rewrite this will be a base 10. Remember that that is an understood base 10. So 10 to the fourth equals 10,000. Base 10 on this one. Base 10 on this one. You can see what your exponents must be. 
um, evaluate using mental math. So they're trying to get you to think of two to some power equals 16. If you have that green um, power sheet, I would use it because that'll tell you two to some power equals 16. Look it up on the table. Four to, the, to some power equals one. Nine to some power equals 81. These are things that you should be able to kind of do in your head or look at your green power sheet. Um, next thing, on the back side, we are doing 21 through 32. Yes, 32. I've got it written on the whiteboard. That's why I keep looking up. Um, and it says evaluate each expression. So we're trying to find the power here. 4 to the x equals 64. Once again, it's kind of that mental math. Look on your power sheet. That would be a third power. Okay. So that is your homework. You guys have a great day. And we will catch up with you soon.